Good morning. Uh, our guest this morning is Delegate Mark Sickles. He's uh, representing the District 43 of Virginia House of Delegates. Also, he's the leader of the Democratic Caucus uh, for the House. Uh, welcome, Mr. Sickles. Uh, great good to be to here you. again, yes. Uh, yeah, you've been here before, and I'm glad that you came by to reflect your thoughts on what's happened in Washington as well as what's going to happen in Virginia for the next couple of weeks before Happy the elections. Be uh, one of the questions always bothers me that uh, we're talking about a loss of $24 billion because of the government shutdown. Now, who would be responsible for this? If there are people who are responsible, is it worth their fight to win philosophical goals at the cost of $26, $24 billion, which is a big amount in this economy? Yeah, it's a lot of money, and a lot of that was harm to, to small businesses in our state, in Virginia. And I don't, we're going to have to be adding up over the next little bit the price we paid for this uh, brinksmanship. You know, I think the president and many members of Congress have said we have got to stop having these crises every, uh, every few months. And uh, I'm glad the president uh, stuck tough to his guns. You know, the Republicans, if they want to uh, do away with insurance for uh, poor people and working class people who don't have insurance now, they need to win elections to do that. And they need to offer their own plan, their own way to, uh, in our case, provide health insurance and routine medical care for one million Virginians. We have eight million uh, people that live in Virginia. One million do not have health insurance. And that has costs throughout society. Our existing system before the Affordable Care Act is, was uh, going in the wrong direction. It has all kinds of cross subsidies in it. And the plan that we want to adopt, the president's plan, is just like his opponent successfully implemented in Massachusetts, where 98 or 99 percent of uh, citizens have health care now. Um, so I, I'm hoping we can get by this. Uh, you know, well, they when you say opponent, you mean uh, Governor Romney? Is that yeah, the, I mean okay. Governor Romney. Uh, this was his plan in yeah. Massachusetts. It's too bad that the uh, Republican base uh, party. Uh, would not let him talk about it during the election because it was his biggest achievement in mm -hmm. public service. And uh, he's got it working there. We need to fix it. I'm, no pr program of this size and scope could ever be perfect. And uh, it needs to be fixed. We need practical people, uh, not ideologues, looking at it and on how we can fix it so that uh, the, we can bring cost downs and things like that. The hospitals are um, really worried about that. Virginians not accepting Medicaid because uh, uh, they are going to lose their, the subsidies they get from the federal government for taking care of indigent people, uncompensated care. So, if, and that, the reason the uh, Affordable Care Act did away with it is that all patients would be covered by Medicaid. That was the theory. But when the Supreme Court said it's going to be optional now, uh, and uh, we have we're kind of in a gray area. We're not sure whether we accepted it or not. We created a commission for it. But when you see uh, reports on this on television, we get thrown in the category that we've not accepted Medicaid expansion. We need to move forward with that. It's 30,000 jobs in Virginia. It's getting maybe up to 400,000 people routine health care that they don't have now. Uh, it just amazes me that we shut down the government because we didn't want one million Virginians to get health insurance for the first time. Now, um, on one side is more focused on the long-term debts, uh, which could be liability for our grandchildren, mm -hmm. while the other side seemed to be uh, focused on current well, survival of right. the economy of the U.S., not only U.S., but uh, being a world leader for the entire uh, globe. <laughs> well, well, to have long-term growth, we need to have short-term growth. And, and taking $24 billion out of the economy these last 16 days was really not a way to get to the long-term solution. And I'd like to say that uh, uh, my Republican friends talk about long-term solutions, but they only want to take it out of uh, middle-class programs like Social Security, Medicare. They are not willing to have uh, the close any tax loophole that uh, the wealthier Americans take advantage of to help balance our budget over the long term. But the Affordable Health Care Act was approved by both houses, uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate, then the Supreme Court also kind of gave their nod. So really, 
it is a non-issue at this time. It is well, just the funding. Well, and it's a, it should be a non-issue, but it is yeah. a big issue in, in the public. By holding the funding, they are just using a tactic to paralyze the government. Well, in that, order to pursue that's my view. I mean, um, ironically, when we, under George W. Bush's presidency, uh, the House leadership held the floor open to, pa to pass a prescription drug benefit, Medicaid Part D, totally unpaid for, unlike Obamacare, totally unpaid for. Uh, it's turned out to be a popular program. It had a lot of glitches when it was starting up to. And uh, our Congressman, Congressman Jim Moran, voted against that at the time, and I asked him about uh, six months ago, I said, Jim, are you, now that the Medicare Part D has turned out to be popular, uh, are you sorry that you voted no? And he said, absolutely not. He was offended that I asked him that. He said it was fiscally irresponsible to pass that program without paying for it. When we did that, we, we went to war twice without asking sacrifice from uh, the American public uh, generally, and uh, that's what's got us into this uh, mess we're in, and it's so ironic that <coughs> the Tea Party, which is really just the hardcore right base of the Republican Party, they get worried about debt and deficit only when there's a Democratic president. You never heard of them for eight years. They were gone under George Bush, and they will admit this now. Well, we should have been out there, but it's just a fact. If we had elected a Republican president last year, we, none of this would be going on now. Yeah. We, you know. Now, how do you think this might affect Virginia, especially the upcoming elections on November 5th? Yeah. And uh, do you see a surge in voter opinion, either the independents yeah. are coming to one side or changing votes, or uh, more aggressively showing up at the polls? Uh, what is Well, we think that's going on out there. We think there's a movement toward Democrats. The polling shows that, uh, especially in Northern Virginia, that uh, people blame the Republicans for this hijinks that we've just emerged from. Uh, their brand, uh, the NBC uh, Wall Street Journal poll, showed them at historic lows. They've never polled that low before, uh, and then the Gallup poll as well. So uh, we think that'll help our candidates. Our governor candidate, Terry McAuliffe, uh, if anything, is a practical person. <laughs> he has got a lot of energy. He wants to get things done. He supported the bipartisan uh, transportation bill that the Speaker of the House and the, and the uh, Majority Leader of the House and the Governor was supported, and his Cuccinelli, uh, Senator Cuccinelli, I mean, the Attorney General, used to be a Senator, uh, he opposed it. He was making phone calls, asking people not to vote for it. And, and that's because, you know, uh, with respect, uh, the Attorney General has no instinct inside of him to compromise and be practical. He's just like the people that we've seen shut down the government as a minority of the House caucus, of that, excuse me, the House of Representatives Republican yeah. caucus. Now, uh, this was a little diversion for everybody. The government shut down the debt limit increase and uh, Affordable Care Act and funding and so forth. So it took everybody's attention away from local issues. Now they are apparently resolved yesterday night. Uh, what do you see, think yeah. are the next important issues well, for Virginia? Yeah, it's, it's well, I mean, in our races, we got to get everybody to come to vote. There's a lot at stake. Uh, we're trying to contact all the voters that uh, voted last year and say, hey, we vote every year in Virginia. This is really important. The fall off and turnout from 08 from to 09 was uh, disastrous for a good government, in my humble opinion. And uh, what we need to get people in office in Richmond that value uh, pre-school uh, education, uh, uh, four-year-old education and earlier. We need to have a reinvestment in higher education. We've cut higher education and spending in half since the Great Recession occurred, and we've got to build that back. Uh, our, our current model of funding higher education is un unsustainable, and it's the seed corn for the next economy. I mean, we need to grow our own jobs, diversify our economy as much as we can away from federal spending. We're the most reliant state in the country on federal spending. How do we do that? One important way is to invest in higher education, in our PhD granting universities, the research that comes out of uh, those universities, translating that technology transfer into the private sector, uh, encouraging the smallest technology businesses, having pro-growth, uh, small business um, incentives to help with our tiniest technology companies because someday they could be the next Google or the next Facebook or something. We need to grow those businesses right here in Virginia. Now, healthcare is spoken so much in different ways, but uh, you always need 
healthy workforce to work. Yes. You always need healthy seniors to back up because they're also there watching what's going on and intervene in terms of uh, voting one way or the other. So why some people don't seem to care about health care? Well, that's a mystery to me. I mean, uh, we're getting uh, out-competed by uh, countries that the firms and the businesses in those countries don't have to worry about health care. It's not their job. Years ago, we decided uh, in the United States that uh, health care was responsibility of employers. We're very different in, on that regard than most every other uh, developed economy and democracy. So we can make it work, though. I mean, the president has got a market-based approach. We passed it into law. I can't understand why uh, they won't accept yes for an answer on the other side since we borrowed this from the Heritage Foundation and the, this was the alternative to Hillary Care and their presidential candidate implemented it successfully in Massachusetts. So I, I you know, I think we need practical yeah. people working together. It's, it's interesting that um, there was an article in New York Times today in op-ed. Uh, it spoke, it talks about the cost of uh, equipment, medical equipment and the taxes on it. And the writer seemed to say that uh, taxes are so small, the costs have really gone up because there is no uh, competition in that area. They, yeah. they had to sign some kind of confidentiality yeah. agreement with the hospitals. So the hospitals cannot disclose a lot of that information. Uh, so those people are really making a lot of profits. Mm -hmm. And they're screaming like, oh, if you increase my taxes, it's going to affect the healthcare mm -hmm. cost. So some of these things really need to be hashed out and verified in a quantitative measure rather than just yes. qualitative yeah. thing that it is hurting, it's not hurting. Well, we, we need to introduce competition every place we can in the healthcare system and help the people who can't afford it after we've got a better competition. Because I think you're right, if we had more transparency and openness, uh, health care would go down, the cost of health care would go down. Uh, but we also want to make sure that our pharmaceutical companies have the, in, uh, the incentive to invest in the next, uh, in the next generation of uh, drugs for us. Now, uh, thanks for all your um, important reflections on what's going on, what you expect. Uh, uh, please look in the camera and in 30 seconds tell the people what they can do to change what they don't yeah. like as far as November yes. 5th. Well, uh, Satish, you know, voting really makes a difference. We've seen that. We've got great examples just in the last decade, two decades, of close elections that made a huge difference in American history. I would ask people to look at our Democratic candidates. We're, we are working to make government work. We want to make it work. We want to make sure we're not wasting anybody's taxpayers' dollars. We're practical. We want to work with the other side in, in every case we can to uh, bring good public policy uh, to Virginia. We've got a lot going for us in this state and please go vote. So on, it uh, all boils down to get out and vote. You have to vote. You okay. Well, thank you again and uh, we'll catch up with you after the election. Well, Maybe tell us a little bit about what happened. I look forward to coming back.